in the airport. Um, you still I, work I, in the airport? Yeah, yeah. It was my very first job straight out of, I was a cabin cleaner. Uh, I was a cabin cleaner. So I cleaned planes. And then okay. um, I always, I'd always talk to the pilots to try to milk their... Um, Whoa. Uh, I, <laughs> of the ocean uh the the center of the universe uh, 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 i i i think i would much rather go to anywhere but the bottom of the ocean what? because the bottom of the ocean to my estimation they probably whenever we talk about like aliens or whatever i think probably that's the location that maybe they would be because you can never get you can't go all the way down because you will die just like you know go to the center of the universe like too those, hot those titanic, space you can't titanic, breathe those right yeah, 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 like the uh, ocean gate um yeah. thingamabob but the bottom of the like there's still species that we haven't discovered yet because we can't go all the way down. Like, it's just one of those things that never really been too appealing to me. And it just yeah. seems very frightening because you're in water. There's only so much you can do. You know, it's dark down there because the sun right. doesn't you even, can't, like, you can't see. penetrate so, that deep right. into the water. So not yeah. only can you not see, unless you have the kind of gear to where you have mobility, which you won't because the water pressure puts you in a scenario where you can't necessarily swim. Yeah. Like it's just, it, you're in a lose, lose situation. So at the bottom of the ocean, despite the fact that curiosity would be something, Oh, I kind of want to see what's down there, but I, I would never bring myself to do it. Like I couldn't be a Marine biologist. I, I'm kind of here. There's no way. You know, Marine biologists don't make that much money. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't no, be surprised. It, it sounds fucked, but like, I remember I was in, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, main, the reason I thought about that is because I was in school, right? And uh, we are just talking about careers. This is high school. My last year of high school, my senior year of high school. We are talking about careers. And uh, people were like, I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a doctor. And some kid says, I want to be a marine biologist. I'm like, hmm? Interesting. I never thought about that. So I do my research. I go home, go on the internet. How much do marine biologists make? And it's like... Thirty-nine to forty-nine thousand dollars a year. I'm like, what the fuck? You want to be a marine biologist? <laughs> 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 Out of everything you could have chose, but you, you want to be broke? What's the matter you chose with you? Marine biologist. <laughs> and listen, I get it. Like your passion, sure, but what the fuck? Yeah, man. You gotta love if you love animals. If you love animals, then passion. maybe you want to do it. But good lord, that's a oof. And the only reason why I even know the profession was because I watched <laughs> Seinfeld. I remember he was talking to um, George Costanza. He was talking to some girl on, on like the beach. It's like, what do you, and it's like, so what do you do? I'm a marine biologist. And then there was a there was a whale or a manatee that was like <laughs> on, on the water, and he's just there, like, well. He has to go walk over there because he said that's his job. It was hilarious. That's the only reason why I know of a marine biologist. But yeah, it's like, damn, man, what the fuck? Why would you, out of all the careers you could have chose, right? Right, right. When they asked you what you wanted to be in high school, what did you say? Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I think at the time I was just saying, man, play. play. What was that? Well, now that'd be something. I want to be Jesus. I want to be Jesus Christ. Right? Somebody <laughs> nail me up right now. But um, uh, I, I'd always say athlete. I'd always say athlete, athlete. or then businessman. Very, very That's vague. That's so funny. Right. Because you know what I say? I said YouTuber. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was a God. thing. You were the, the, the kid picking his nose saying YouTuber. Well, no, I was like, like, what do you want to do? And I was just like, I was like, well, I wanted to be like, in high school, I just wanted to be famous. Because that's like high school is a popularity contest and right, money doesn't right. necessarily matter as much. Like you don't realize the importance of money and you just assume like when you're a kid, you assume that fame comes with money. Every famous person you see, you assume they're making Right, right. You just money. immediately say, oh, this person's a, a millionaire. But little did you know, they're, yeah, they are then, still struggling to make ends meet. So famous, but then I didn't really have any talents like that. So I was like, I want to be a YouTuber. Interesting. Post YouTube videos. In high school. Well, but then again, you, because you're only a couple of years younger than me. I'm like a year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Year, yeah, 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 year two, what were you, 90, 96? No, 95. 95. Oh, yeah. So you're only one year younger than me. Yeah, yeah so that's interesting because when I was in high school, YouTube was a thing, but not so heavily to the point where people were really aspiring. Like it's always been, ah, I'll post videos when did you or something. Start YouTube? Um, I started 2016. 
Oh, okay. So on YouTube, yeah. So I started on YouTube in 2016. Damn, but I should have, I should have fucking started when I was in high school because yeah. I, I always thought you needed the equipment, you needed the mic, you needed the um the right webcam the, the, or the, the camera. Whatever, yeah, Don't need. Think, I yeah. could have been uploading on like a 360p, you know, webcam. Yeah from years ago because I had some great ideas when I was in high school or different sort of videos I could have done. I should have been started, but it is what it is. But yeah. I, I always said, you know, athlete was one. And then from when I was a kid, I always loved wearing the suit with the briefcase to go to an office. But I would never envision like the cubicle, nothing like that. I just figured I'd be in a conference room. What did you room. think businessmen did? Huh? I, it just seemed like it had a very cool aesthetic to him. Like, yeah, this guy's got a briefcase. I don't know what it is. It's just the briefcase has always been like this. Mm -hmm. You must be important. You got a briefcase. When I, when I first started doing my entrepreneurship journey, I thought you had to wear a suit. I thought it was right. part of your, So you go far enough on my Instagram is a, a, video, a picture of me wearing a suit. Trying to be an entrepreneur, I've, I would never wear a suit these days. But like, you know, I now like, I think about, it, I've never seen you wear a suit. If I have a suit on, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm important. Mm -hmm. That's what I assumed. But the, the world has changed so much in those days. But looking back, it was like, wow, this is what people think entrepreneurship is, huh? Right, right. Because I, I literally was like, all right, yeah, I could be a businessman. No idea what business or right. whatever I would be doing. I'm like, yeah, just the idea of going into be like, hey, I'm going to the office. I've got a suit. I got a briefcase. And then as I've gotten older, the fuck can you fit inside of a briefcase? Like, it's so right. incredibly thin. Like, yo, I'll put a laptop in there. Maybe I'll put some papers or whatever the case is. I got a few pens. Like, it just doesn't seem very. I think back in the day, people were putting, like, papers in there. Like, yeah, probably, there. probably. Like, nobody needs no briefcase nowadays. Like a dossier. Like a folder with papers right, in there. Right, right. I'm. I, I want to buy one just so I can say I got it from my childhood. You know, yeah. my, my 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 younger self. But um, when I when I was in high school, that was that was it. It was like athlete and then some form of like businessman. Because I went nice. to my I went to a vocational school, so yeah. I was learning carpentry, um, all the things surrounding construction, plumbing, um, electrical work. So I could have been a blue collar worker, just go into the field, and I would never be out of a job. Because these are the things that build the what entire the economy in the world. Blue, blue collar is like a yeah. So blue like collar would be handyman like, type. Yeah, thing? yeah, kind of like the handyman kind okay. of thing. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe a uh, truck driver is also blue collar. And what's a white collar? And everything. White collar. If I'm not mistaken, it would be uh, more like office uh, uh, kind of kind of worker. And are there other collars? Uh, that's a good question. Are there more collars? White are collar, there more collars? blue collar. Collar mm. greens. Yeah, there got collar greens. Yeah, okay. that, that, that's one. Um, if you'd like to be produce or something like that, it's, hey, maybe they, people so can be whatever collar, they want to be nowadays. Collar. I'm a I'm a yeah, collar right green. Collar, collar. Yeah, right, right collar, blue collar. Where does uh, that come from? From what they're wearing. So white collar, you're wearing a dress shirt, probably. Right. Ah. And blue collar, think of like kind of like one of those uh, not jumpsuits, but what are they called? Safety vest, something of like that yeah, nature. Like something you know that blue generic janitor thing they wear. Right. Got Damn. you, yeah, yeah, got you, like a uh, regular like work uniform. So if, you're doctor, that if you're a doctor, what are you? Like, let's say you're a doctor, what would you be? Yeah, probably like a white collar, maybe, maybe med uh, um, medical. Medical? Med well, yeah, of course it's medical something, but I think it's more of like a higher, <laughs> yeah, probably just like a higher, higher, uh, uh, like lawyer, stuff like that, right? <laughs> they probably got something going on. Marine biologist, blue collar. <laughs> yeah, heavy, heavy debt kind of, I guess, because <laughs> you, you, lawyer, doctor, um, what was the other one? Lawyer, doctor. There's another one that's, that's like the high status uh, 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 judge. Engineer. Things like that. Maybe things that just require, maybe even Scientist. engineer, something just high levels of debt. Attorney, but accounts, these are all white yeah. jobs. Software developer, uh, market researcher, real estate agent, engineer, financial analyst, healthcare. These are, these are the jobs that all the people dentist. wanted in school. Yeah. Before that kid said dentist. marine biologist. Aaron, dentist. <laughs> architect. Rocket scientists. List of blue collar jobs: electrician, right. construction, right. Royal, uh, boiler maker, boiler, plumber, aircraft mechanic, mechanic, marine biologist, police officer. I'm just kidding, not marine biologist. Um, <laughs> elevator installers, firefighter. Right, uh, right, right, right. Truck driver. Yeah, truck driver. That's yep. a cool job. That's yep. a sexy job. What are you? I'm a firefighter. Oh, it, it seems sexy on the surface. It seems sexy on the surface until you find yourself constantly having to fight fires. But that's brave, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That is like, sexy, though. I would imagine, like, let's say yeah. I'm a firefighter, I go in there shirtless. I walk out. Oh, yeah, without question. <laughs> yeah, but it seems yeah. like that. Because I remember you walk out was... a burning building, sweaty, shirtless, some ash. Oh, no, you don't, want to, you don't want to go out there. You're pulling a child no... out of the fire. You're like, ugh. 
Saved an orphanage today. What'd you do today? I, I pulled a burning kid out. I pulled burning kid. Oh, no, not a burning kid. That'd be bad. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I think you I, failed at that I, point. <laughs> I pulled a kid out of a burning building. Mm. That's a, that's a, no pun intended. But then that's you have a to live job. the next three years of your life with black lung until you're like, you, you're finished. Fair. Right. But I, I always, when I was a kid, I was like, man, you know, being a firefighter seems like it's very cool until they I started talking to, to though, firefighters. Huh? Yeah, they make these gr magnificent benefits. But if I'm not mistaken, and there might be some firefighters who are watching, so you could definitely verify in the comment section. But it's like three days on, yeah. four days off, or four days on, three days off. But then you're working the entire time. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're working just straight through because you always you got to be on call. So if if there's a you're just oh well we're out at dinner with the family. Oh there's a fire over there. Well I'll see you later, honey. And you got to go about your business. Go save yeah, the dog on fire. Cool as fuck, you know it's it is cool. Jobs. It is cool. But they, there was um I saw on TikTok it was going viral. Where they were like, what do firefighters do all day? Just rub baby oil on Yo, their body and do push up. Sexiest jobs, right? Yeah, look at the sexiest. I think firefighters gotta be one of the sexiest jobs. Oh no, no, because uh, they they have always talked about like a man in uniform has always been like at the top, like a military man, uh, um, <laughs> policeman. One, one woman say, um, "I want a military man, not one no, woman." No, it, it seem it seems cool until you actually get into said relationship with those types of people, because then you're in a situation yeah. where you know you're incredibly highly desired from damn near everybody. I love a man in uniform, and then moreover, you have to dedicate your entire life to the job versus the, the actual Sexy family. Jobs, like, like I think the the ones women like it's like firefighter, doctor, lawyer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think those are the three sexiest jobs. Cause it's like status that comes along with it. Right. It's a status um, symbol that comes along what with it. What's the sexiest job? Good He's lord. Laughing. <laughs> Dude, I looked up. I looked up uh, sexiest job, but I accidentally misspelled sexiest, and I looked up the ten most sexist jobs. <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> okay, we're about to. Top are the, ten most what, sexiest what, jobs. What are the like, top ten most sexist <laughs> jobs? Let's give it to us. Insurance. Okay, so this is. <laughs> insurance. Insurance is sexist. <laughs> Here are the 15 jobs with the largest gender wage gaps based on the latest data from the DLS. Okay. Uh, insurance sales agents. Yeah, well, okay, that makes sense. I don't know. Okay, that makes sense because it's sales. Like, the wage gap isn't real in sales because you're sell it's commission based. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, based on, it's based on performance. It's yeah. a meritocracy. Okay. Number two, will shopping. Or won't. Retail sales person. Retail really? sales person. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. In retail sales. Yeah, there's no wage gap in sales. It's all. <coughs> yeah, it's all. Yeah. Yeah, it's, okay. It's, oh, it's all based yeah. on burden of performance. So that's not really a. That's not sexism. Real that's just. Brokers and sales. <laughs> yeah, it's, sales. It's, it's, okay. It's Personal financial advisors, marketing and sales managers, <laughs> education administrators, general and operation managers, so, physicians and surgeons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yo! In the middle of surgery, you wake up. Oh, geez, are those like, tits? What, yeah, what, oh, what Lord. If you, what if you're like out and you wake up and you see a female <laughs> surgeon? You're like, oh, kill me now. Kill oh, me Lord, now. no. No, it might keep you alive, though. You wake up with an erection. <laughs> the blood's flowing. The blood is flowing. Yo, that's, that's so fucking foul. <laughs> Good Lord. Sexist. Oh, my God. So, Top 10 that's most that's sexist that's jobs. No, no, no. But what is, the, what is the sexiest jobs, though? We, Securities, commodities, and financial services. <laughs> yeah, apparently that seems to be the case. Good lord. She's like, I think what an you, article. She's like, I think you should invest in this because I think it's cool. I think you should invest in Etsy. <laughs> you should invest in Pinterest. Oh, apparently. I'm on there all the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you feel sorry. It's, it's, so, it's, so, it's, like, oh, it's so sexist. What are you but doing? it's like it's like, oh my goodness. Good lord. But uh, yeah, I guess the I guess the, the top ten sexiest jobs. Oh okay, what are the top ten sexiest right, jobs? Give, Not the sexiest <coughs> jobs. We're giving us the top ten. Give me a sec. I, got, I just got myself a mic. <laughs> like, oh, I, I guess the, the moral of this story, women are not good in sales, apparently. Yeah. That seems to be the case. Well, you know what's surprising, though? Because I have a friend. He hires, while he looks for these, these jobs, side note, I have a friend. He only hires women mm -hmm. salespeople. Right. Because it's a statistic. Women are able to stay on the phone longer for cold calls. Right. They're able to stay on the phone longer than men. Because mm -hmm. if a woman calls you, you're not going to hang up on them or be rude to them. Right. You know, but I think in those certain professions, it's like if a woman's selling me insurance, I'm going to kind of be like, mm, give me the right. guy to sell me the thing. All right. I got uh, Tinder, uh, Tinder reveals the 15 most right swiped jobs. For yeah. Sexiest women. jobs. Talk to us. Ready? <clears throat> yeah. Sexiest job. Number one, physical therapist. Oh, okay. Must be good with your hands. I could see that. Okay. Interior designer. 
pretty gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super a little gay. Bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number three, founder slash entrepreneur. All right. Agree Very vague. Okay. They all put that though. They, yeah. A guy. Would yeah. Be like, anybody. He'll be doing some like I don't know some pyramid scheme shit. I'm a I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. No, right. you're not, sir. Uh, number four, PR and communications. Okay. Interesting. Five is teacher, which can go for both men uh, and women. Right. I could, right. Oh, is it? Is this just strictly? Wait, what the fuck? No, no, most, what, most what? high swiped. No, I guess. but yeah, but then by guys, women. But the, yeah, Yo, by, by women. Oh, by, by women. women okay. By women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, number six will shock you. It's college student. What? <laughs> Not really a job. Oh, but, but no, I think it could be based just off of yeah, just numbers but, but alone. If it's going off Tinder and the people are yeah, swiping, right, right, it's like, right, oh, right, right, yeah. co- like Tinder's <clears throat> used in colleges, so all the yeah, kids are swiping yeah, in colleges. Got you. So this might be a little skewed if you're using Tinder data. Yeah, this yeah. is weird. Seven through ten are in a funky order. Speech language pathologist. Okay. Then it's pharmacist. Yeah. Then it's social media manager, Good which Lord. is like what forty thousand dollars a year. Like what? Is look up, no, but look up something where they interview just women yeah. as a whole instead of just women on Tinder. That's interesting. Ten is model. Ten is model. If, if wow. You're doing, if, if you're in, wow. doing Tinder, obviously college students going to be on there because yeah. all these college kids that are horny that are just swiping. Right. I think you'd have to oh, go yeah. like professional. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. It's not a good grasp. Of no. The world. So I'm sorry. That list was most right swipe jobs for women. So this this list splits it into women and oh, men. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so okay, physical therapist, interior designer. That's why that made sense. Yeah. Okay. So a guy is looking at a founder entrepreneur and being like, "Huh, um, college student, of course." Yeah, yeah. yeah. A guys young want college, college student. student, right? Uh, and I farm- feel like, here's the thing, though. I feel like guys will just swipe on everything. They don't yeah. care. Okay. They don't even read the job. Just this like- is <clears throat> the jobs the apps, for men. I was doing. Right. Mm-hmm. So that women liked number one, pilot. Ah, that's oh, a sexy course. job. That's a sexy Very job. Sexy job. job. Yeah. Very sexy Flying job. planes, baby. See, they make a lot of money too. They make like 150 grand a year. Yeah, yeah baby. I, me, when I used to work in the airport, um, you I used to work in the airport. Yeah, yeah. It was my very first job. Straight. I, I was a cabin cleaner. Uh-huh. I was a cabin cleaner, so I cleaned planes, and then mm-hmm. um, I always, I'd always talk to the pilots to try to milk their. Um, Whoa! You should never have a pause after saying milk. The sexiest job. I used to milk the pilots. Good lord! Good lord! There's a super pause in. That was crazy. That was crazy. That was crazy. So it was a call, right? I would, I would try to, uh, let's say, I would try to get an idea of how they would fly the planes. Yeah, milk was the wrong term. Milk, milk was the wrong word. The pilot. <laughs> milk the pilot is crazy. Milk the pilot is crazy. Yeah, we might have to cut that. Oh, you know, that's, crazy. that's crazy. Oh, Lord. I shouldn't have said that. That's a super pause. You got to do a preemptive pause. Oh, what else? Situations. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, w- I would speak to the pilot about like what buttons would you have to press? Like, let's say if it's a crisis situation, <laughs> right? You say it's just fucking yeah, right. It's, it's, it, there's no way to dig yourself out this hole. So I would ask the pilot, like, you know, if the plane if the plane was going down, it's a crisis situation. You need somebody to step in. You let's just say somebody eliminated the pilot. What do you utilize inside of the? Um, I'm not gonna call what the pilot's r- you know room <laughs> is. Can't go there. For the so what do you use the inside? What is it? What is, what is it? Of the pilot's room. What, what's it called? Um, what's the name? His what? Let's <laughs> just hit the front of the plane. <laughs> what would you utilize inside there in order to save the plane? <laughs> I can't, bro. Yeah, so when I was a cabin cleaner, that was one of the things that I, I'd go and I'd speak with the pilots about, man, how do, you, what, what do you, how do you figure this stuff out? How do you figure this stuff out? <laughs> but pilots number one. Pilots number pilots one. Number one, okay. Oh, that was hilarious. Oh, I'm crying. Oh, pain. Pain. <sighs> number two, cabin cleaner. No. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Is it me? I should go back. Uh, number two is founder entrepreneur. Nice. Three, firefighter. Right. Oh, yeah. There it is. Four, doctor. Yep. I predicted this. Pilot I missed. Five, TV and radio personality. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. I can see that. Six is teacher. So, oh. Okay. Okay. Fellas, become a teacher. Kind of, still kind of sus, but it's okay. S- no, imagine like a, a good looking, handsome college professor. Right. Uh, okay, I, I, I see what you mean, but yeah. also like There's a, goodwill the, hunting. Male teachers right. are probably the ones that are milking the pilot. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it could happen. Could happen. Seven is engineer. Yeah. Eight, okay. model, kind of gay. <laughs> to be that a male model, I mean, okay, so here's the way I look at it, right? <laughs> would you guys be like, I understand the wh- why you would say that, but like, why would you like, as a man, if I could get around with my good looks and get paid for it, bro, say less. Yeah. You can call me whatever you want. I'm like, if women like me, I'm getting paid for looking good, bro, sign me up. 
I mean, it works. I get it. But yeah. the only thing I never understood was like runway models. I, I never got like, what do you do for a living? I yeah. walk. I well, no, just, like, I, I never got Like the dude, the, uh, the the prison dude. The oh, dude oh Jack, Jamie yeah, I was just talking about this dude Bro, like three he, days ago. He married a billionaire woman. Yeah, just cause he's a, like yeah. I'm like this guy, his mugshot goes viral, and yeah. these ladies are fawning over him. Yeah. And then he comes out. Mm, I don't even know if he was a model before he had gone to prison. He, just, he with, just came out all of these deals to go and do modeling. Yeah. And you talk about a layup of a life. And now it's like, yeah, I went from this penitentiary or jailhouse location to now marrying a billionaire yep. I'm, I'm representing brands left and right imagine you're a good looking dude who did everything the right way Don't you imagine. can't get a job <laughs> you should have done like attempted yeah. robbery you know armed robbery or something have and your then, mugshot go viral then. and bam maybe he did it as a marketing tool to get himself out Jeez. there what are the other ones David? incredible no, that's number eight. So there's two more, right? Should uh, be two yeah. more. Well, police it goes, officer. It like a list of 50. I don't know. If it's got to be like two. It's got to be two people in unit. Well, maybe not so much as of as of yeah. late. Police police officer stock has dropped in the last ten oh, years yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, number nine is paramedic. Okay. Uh, okay. Ten Same. is still college student. College student is there. Interesting. And it was uh, for guys. It was number six. So it's not too different. Hmm. Uh, Eleven is lawyer. Twelve lawyer personal trainer. Thirteen advisor. Police officer is 14. Oh, okay. ah, well, and the last one is military. Ah, yeah. Hey, so it did break. Military? Yeah, it did break. Did it break. I'm surprised that, that yeah. women, because I, I don't know. I think military, I think of the guys that are deployed and their wives cheat on them. Yeah, yeah. That's essentially, the ultimate, that's, that's the ultimate comeback. Yeah. Like, if a military dude ever will, like, like if, as a military person, you can never, <clears> ever hate on anyone because the, the, Instant response coming your way is like, yo, while you're deployed, your wife's getting plowed. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You're done. You yeah. know, so it's like. Because it's literally, a, it's a profession. Because, of course, there's no guarantee you'll make it home on any day, regular, yeah. just life. The only thing but guaranteed is if, your wife is getting plowed. Right. Because I, I remember seeing all of the memes that were going viral of this person's been deployed for like a few years. You're going to come back and now you got like an infant child. Like, oh, man, you know, I was pregnant. Like, what did you send your semen overseas by yeah. way of UPS? There's no way. Right, your wife's cheating on you. You married a whore, but well, you know that's yeah, sad, bro. I don't know. I, so it sucks because it's like I think most a lot of military. There's some. I have uh, TJ. He works for me. He's yeah. a, he's a veteran. Oh yeah, he's a former drill you know? instructor. Yeah. So I think I think some military people, the ones that like serve the country out of like the goodness out of their heart because they love this country. Right, right. They don't deserve stuff like that. But then there are other military people that. You know, it is what it is. I need yeah. to pee. This is a great episode so far, though. I'm loving this. I need to use a restroom yeah, you, 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 a The return of Renee's urine. I know. I, I had a good, like, four. He's, we've gone so 10 good. episodes He's consecutively back. without any urine from Mr. Lacad. Last yet, episode, he confessed. He's like, I, right. I, I was holding it. He held his pee, sacrificed the kidney and bladder, was able to make it to the bathroom. But this time around, not so much. His bowels do not obey. Uh-uh. No. Yeah, so top 10 are very appealing because I, I, I mean, we could take this moment to maybe talk about like the dating apps, because I know a lot of times people, you know, they hop on dating apps. They have no philosophy on how they want to do it or they search for certain people to try to find interest in. I've always looked at dating apps like this. The best way to utilize it. Go on the app, swipe right on everything with your eyes closed. Then you just choose from the pool of the people who swipe right on you. Makes things so much easier. Hold on. What? You you swipe through? Oh, I guess. Yeah. I guess. Because it, it, it you, cuts down the amount of time that you waste trying to just judge based off of just photos and bio alone. And it makes it easier to actually build those connections. Because think about it. If you put five minutes into thinking about whether you wanted to swipe right on this person or not, and then finally you go ahead and do so, but they don't swipe right on you, you kind of just wasted time because they weren't really interested I guess. in you. <laughs> but uh, coming from a guy before i met my girlfriend i was uh, using those apps mm -hmm. you have like a limited set of likes so if you just you wasted all your likes on but like it's, it's, on a, it's on a daily basis i guess so it yeah. resets the following yeah, but if day you waste that all, wait why do you have a limited amount of likes on we're talking about uh, uh <clears throat> chiseled adonis yes. said that um best way to use tinder or something like that is to just swipe with your eyes closed and then choose from the pool of women that you match with. interesting yeah but then my perspective is when i was using it i would do it sort of like as a something to fidget with during the day so if i was like bored or something you just go just on quick it. fire rapid right. fire but if i'm out of likes then i just waste you know, what i'm gonna fill the time I, uh, with. <laughs> I stopped i tried any sort of dating app i like 2019 when i was like just trying to do it i started using them and i realized something the girls that would actually like me back, because here's the thing, my, my 
redeeming qualities is my personality, because I'm funny, energetic, charming, handsome. Um, and, uh, <laughs> real humble, real humble. And then like, and then like money, to be honest. Right. It's like, hey, there's this guy. He's kind of cool. He's in shape, and he just fucking has funds to do fun stuff. Right. Because that's what women like. So in real life, I've noticed like the girls I, I that like me in real life are beautiful, <laughs> yep, attractive, sexy. On a on a dating app, like from I remember, I would just swipe, and the women that would like me, I would look back, and I sound like a fucking dickhead, and I apologize in advance, but I, I would look and I'd be like, this had the audacity. To think that they would match with me because I bought the premium one that shows you who likes you. Oh, right, right. Damn, so dude, some just, of the girls are definitely saying the same thing about Renee. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so I was looking at like the audacity to think that we would match in real life, mm -hmm. you know? So after that, I deleted Tinder. I never used it again. And I never used any sort of dating app because I was like, man, it made me feel bad about myself. I was like, maybe I am ugly. <laughs> oh, dude, Louis, oh, wait, there's too many. There's yeah. too many like individuals in here who's not going to work for me. Because uh, yeah. I, I just looked at it from a numbers and a time perspective. Because I said to myself, if I go on this app and I'm trying to go look at each individual profile, I think I'm wasting a decent amount of time. And for me, time is everything. So I said, all right, I will take 46 seconds to just have my phone in my hand, not even look down. I'll just swipe go through everybody. The moment that I now reach the maximum amount of swipes, I'll give myself maybe about like 20 some minutes. I'll look at the pool of people who now match with me and I'll choose from that pool. Those who I'm not interested in, I'll go ahead and delete them from there. So now remove you. That should open up some more swipes down the line. And then from those who are relatively interested in me, I'll just choose from that pool and reset the following day. Cause just it's it, dating's all so methodical with everything. Thing. Yeah, nothing is just like it's all a numbers game because ultimately, if you're on the dating the app, the number one goal is individual, bro. Right, right. Oh, shit, you know, because if you look at it from the the goal from the app is to get off of the app, get their phone number, then get from the phone conversation, whether it be FaceTime, whether it be video call, whether it be um, yeah. text, phone, whatever the case is, get from there to meet in person. So the fastest way to do that is immediately go from the swipe to the conversation on the app, go from the conversation on the app to the phone conversation, go from the phone to meeting in person. So I do everything yeah. within four, four to maybe about a week, we meet in person. You know, the other thing I realized is those apps, if you don't pay for them, they show you all the fucking ugly bitches. Whoa. You right, right. Like, get like, like, it, ugly well, bitches. Well, not necessarily ugly. I think it's just a matter of money. I mean, like, if you're willing not to pay, for me. <laughs> there are so, some that are on But I mean, if if you're yeah, willing you'll to get pay one or two to, play, to keep you, you go, engaged. Well, right. Because if you pay premium, it, yeah. then you get you get pushed in the um, no, yeah. the algorithm of the app. Yeah, like yeah. It, was yeah. Just, it was just not working for me because Instagram, like my response rate on Instagram, was substantially higher. Right. Than on Tinder because you have to match the talk. Instagram, you just go. Hunting, you pick the biggest one, like the best one, right? Mm -hmm. Not the biggest, you know, the yeah. right terminology, because Tinder, the biggest ones around Tinder. I mean, they're like, the biggest yeah, 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 yeah. You look for super like heavyweights. The, you look for like the, the best ones on Instagram, and you get to just pick. Right. And my response rate was just way higher. Maybe it's because I have a cool Instagram or something. Yeah. But like, it was just way higher than than Tinder. So I don't know. It was just really discouraging. I did. I was like, nah, this is not it, bro. This sucks. Yeah, because it all depends. It all depends on what the goal is, and yeah. then because for me. It, st it, it started to change for me. Like, I was getting content out of it. And then on top of that, it started to become very fun. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. So we could just run through um, on multiple. Because I think I was on, like, five apps at the same time. So I would take Yo. maybe, like, four, maybe four minutes out of the day. Because... People who spend a shit ton of time on the app, it's incredibly time consuming. It could be yeah. another social media. But yeah. for me, I just looked at it from a time perspective. It takes four minutes. I max out the swipes on everywhere. Same profile everywhere. I may have matched with somebody on two different you know, apps That's or whatever. Wild. I just go straight through there and I'm like, all right, if I have 100 swipes out of the day and let's just say in each of the 100, I get about like 50 to maybe 40 to 50 matches or yeah. maybe 20 to 40 matches. If I do that across all five apps, now I got a hundred matches. Now yeah. from that hundred of the matches, maybe I get rid of 60 and there's 40 different people who I can go and try to talk to, which is still an incredible high number. But that then from the 40, game. I can choose within the 40. All right, cool. This person looks very interesting. This person has yeah. an all right bio. This person seems like they got going on. Shoot over a generic message to, you know, each one. And then those who actually, you know, really look very appealing, I'll 
curate a message just specifically for them and then wow. move from there. It's so funny how what guys, a gentleman. It's so funny how yeah. guys, guys have their like processes. Because yeah. it makes sense. Like a lot of guys are optimized like that. I was optimized yeah. kind of in a similar way, but I, I did mine through Instagram. Right, um, right. I would just send DMs on Instagram, but the first message I would send, it was never ever like super forward. It was just something to get a response. Right. So I would, right, let me take you to the mall. <laughs> right, right, right. That's what I sent my wife now. Hey, look, listen, she's my wife now, so it, it worked. Um, hey, it worked. True. Yeah, true, true. she may but, say it didn't work, but it worked. Yeah, exactly. She's like, well, no, that's not why. I'm like, uh, I don't know, because look, it definitely had a role to play. Yeah. Right. Um, but the way I look at it, it's like I would just send something to get a response, any response, and then I would leave it on red. So the response would come in. I would leave it on red. It would be just anything to elicit a response. As soon as you get the response, uh, I'm a marketer, so this. This is where the money comes in. I let the money work for me. I had ads. Instagram allows you to do this. Yeah, retarget ads. Retarget ads. So I would just <clears throat> run an ad specifically to the audience, women who have DM'd my Instagram account 18 to 30. Mm -hmm. So that age range of all women that have, that have responded to my Instagram, that have DM'd my Instagram account back, anyone that's replied. And now they see my ads for the yep. rest of their life. And it was just a cool ass ad. It's like, my name is Renee Lacar. Yep. Here's my cool lifestyle. Boom, and it's a lifestyle ad. So now these women... Uh, that have I send a message they respond they could be completely uninterested in me they just like oh I don't even know I don't know who this guy is oh that's interesting I just send something so I get a response they've now responded and they're in they're in my little funnel my little marketing thing right and my now they're seeing my way. ads like like five times six times right I would look at I could see all that on the back end of like my ads manager Facebook I'm a businessman I understand this you know so now I would see this all these women have seen my life so they saw I ran them to DM them mm -hmm. they've seen my life. Now, and, I, and I, let it, I let them cook for about like a month or two. I put them in there for a month or two. They continue to see my ads, right? Uh, some of them follow me, so they see my content. So it's like a pressure cooker. You, like in the same way you would get customers to buy, it takes the average consumer about six or seven times to purchase a product. Right. The average consumer. So now these women are in this pressure cooker. And as soon, it takes about two months for them to see me five, six times. So after about two months, I'll DM them back. Something super casual. Oh, my bad. I just saw this. <laughs> Right, <clears throat> but they have seen you How X you? amount and of time. At this point, they already know everything about me. They've they've seen my ads. They've clicked mm -hmm. it. They've looked at my page. They're like, who is this guy that I keep seeing? Right. Right. And, like, and he didn't respond to me. He didn't DM me back. He must be busy. Whatever. And at that point, that's when I'm like, oh, hey, how him. are you? No, but did you open and up the demographic to that ad? Because I may have, I've seen that oh, no, ad a number of different times. Yeah, I run that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, am I, am I trans? <laughs> no, no, I'm like, so, am, am, am I trans? So, <laughs> what, so what's so happening I run here? That, I run that ad in general just to, to everyone. Right. Ah, uh, like, okay, they got, because yeah. I was like, am I a woman? So that's like a regular that's ad, but I also have like, a, like, I used to, I don't have any, obviously I'm married now. Yeah. Um, but. Then I used to have like a small subsection where I would just mm. slam them with that ad. Right. So they would see it, and then by the time I respond two months later, oh my bad, I just saw this. And they're like, oh my God, it's okay. And they're finally like, oh my God, he DM'd me back. It's right. this guy, I've seen him before. They're so like, dude, like that's game. Cook. I'm like, my bad, like, that's I just got this. What's people. your number? Give me the phone number, boom. Yep. You know what? And, that's, that's and like, as a, as a man, too, the process, as right. a man with money, it made it super simple because right. it's like two messages, right? And then uh, when you have money, it's like, I tell guys with, with money this. Uh, it's no longer just women in your area. It's women all, all over the, yeah, the country. It's global. It's global. It's global. Theor theoretically. National and global. Like right. Fishing right. Fishing with those electric nets. Have you seen those? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm over here fishing with a rod. Everyone's fishing really with a rod. Doing an electric, electric net. Because then at the, that point, now it's like you have so much reach and so many people have seen you. Yeah. And then like they're, they're almost like hooked up. So by the time you get there, you're like, cool. Oh, where do you live? Oh, I live in Texas. Cool. You've been to Miami before? No. Boom. Book That's fly, boom, where boom, 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 Instagram then, becomes the dating app for you. And then your, right. and then your life, and then your right. life becomes like your life sells it for you. Cause like, let's say you take this, this woman from, again, I'm not, I'm giving away the game now cause I'm married. I'm never doing this ever again. So all the right. guys out there, you got a little bit of money teaching you the strategy. You get this woman that's never seen, experienced anything like this. Right. Right. She comes here she sees the penthouse view of the ocean they're like wow who is this mysterious guy <laughs> and they're just like so in they're so sold and so into you already mm -hmm. that like you win automatically so when you cast the net that big and you have a strategy like that like you can almost like like work it in your advantage so that's why i just did the instagram thing i didn't do any dating apps because i don't know dating apps it, it's so much work because then you have to like talk you have to like sell you have to, you sell, have to yourself sell yourself you have to, to sell yourself versus right. like 
them coming to you already sold. Now they're now they're selling themselves to you. Right. Because like, you I, flip I'm, the dynamic. Exactly. You flip it because you're, you're the girl in this you know situation. Like, to where, want, yeah. Like, right. Right. Because they're like, I want the lifestyle versus you saying, okay, I want this girl because right. aesthetically, very. See, that's that's the best way to go about it. Because I did everything from a numbers perspective, oh, yeah, you just, and then <clears throat> it it really it worked in my favor because for me my. At the time, it was I wanted one for every day. Oh if I have a roster of seven, and then I can rotate, that works. But then, Wait, are we talking about women still? Yeah, yeah. During okay, during, during it. time, it was like all right because so. at the time I'm like, hey, I got I got some free time. I just at, at, I think I had just crossed a hundred thousand subscribers at the time. Yeah. I'm like, man, this is this is great. Let's see if I can work it out. And it, it it was it was a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare because I I recognize at that time I'm not an individual who can juggle that that many that yeah. many women at the same time. It's, it's just it's time consuming. I found myself losing you know more time that was allocated towards work, but. Just in order to go and acquire a said roster, my method did work out. Yeah. <laughs> it ended up working out. But uh, me now, oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. But there's a lot of people out there who's oh, I can't get a date or whatever. I'm like, oh, I don't well, think it's, it's like, going about it the, the right way. way. It's, like, it's almost like business, right? Like right. The, the easiest seller is the customer that already knows you. Yeah. It's like yeah. someone that's heard about your brand already. Right. So, like, if someone's already heard of you, because another one that I would do is when I started blowing up on TikTok, TikTok's algorithm would show you people's videos. <laughs> That go viral, but it says follows you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So sometimes yeah, it would yeah, show yeah. me like it would show me like like a hot girl's thing, and I say this person follows you. I'm like, oh, perfect, noted. Right. And then I would it would I would resp I would DM them and be like, oh my god, like I follow you. Blah, blah. So it's like it, it just makes it so much easier. Yeah. You if if, if you know how to market yourself the right way, then it's it's it's. Well, I, I heard this on the internet. Someone said like money. Makes someone like you, yeah. but then fame on top of the money oh, yeah, yeah, multiplies yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, and lifestyle would probably. So it's like it, it, it all cascades together. Yeah, because the easiest game is like the game where it's like you just it, it you have it organically. Yeah, you know. Yeah, or you could at least appear to have it because I've seen a lot of people where again, like going back to what we talked about in in a prior episode regarding like just if you can create a vibe per se, something to where it's unforgettable like you you love to go out on yachts maybe yeah. bi-weekly or or, yeah. or multiple times uh, um quarterly or something of that yeah. nature if you now give somebody that experience now granted everybody's it's hopping on yachts now but yeah. if you're like all right cool i rented this yacht or maybe i own the yacht go over there and it's a great evening and you just go about your day. You didn't come and try to make things transactional. Yeah. You didn't try to set it up to where this person felt like they had to be in your presence or you had to be around them. It's like, all right, you come for the experience. You go about your business. They're going to be like, man, that was such a vibe. I want to come back and just go well, and enjoy that. Yeah. So I, if I had money at the time, because I really wanted to do this, but I was broke um, at the time. I didn't have enough money. I wanted to go and invite all of the different girls that I had matched with and I was talking <laughs> to, get a yacht, <clears throat> get a couple of my friends, hop on there we all they don't know that i'm talking to all I, of them yeah. invite them up on onto the yacht this isn't like some sort of crazy game because people do this all the time I, bring them up all on on there have a time don't like fully immerse myself solely with one in particular but enjoy my time with all and then just go about my so business. that was that was my strategy actually right. that's what i used to do right so i wouldn't be enough, surprised yeah we my had the wife, same idea i, I was met just broke i met my wife <laughs> yeah. at, at dinner and like in miami before you go to dinner I would just invite a lot of different girls that I was talking to. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, hey, I'm going to go to dinner with some friends. Right? So we go. It is some friends technically, but it's like three or four guys and like nine girls. Yeah. Yeah. So they all go. Yep. I didn't even invite her. Though. Uh, one of my friend's friends invited her. And I ended up sitting next to her. And that's how we met the first time. But um, that's what I would do. Because then what happens is you have like this dynamic where there's like scarcity with just the one guy and there's like nine girls. So naturally, yeah. they're all the ones that are competing for attention. Right. Right. So yeah, I I get it. That's that's kind of how it works, um, but yeah, man. So that that's the way I see it. I think a lot of guys they're like, oh, why would you go that hard? I just got a game. I do it like that. It's like, no, make your life easier, bro. If you have money, make your life easier. Right. Why are you gonna make your life harder? Why are you gonna waste your time like talking to girls and doing all this stuff when you could just make it ten times easier? Yeah. And it's funny enough, Andrew Tate says something because back to the point of you saying like, hey, if you're a vibe, that's just what it is. Andrew Tate said something, and I hate to be quoting Andrew Tate. But he does have a point. All right. For me, I can relate to this one. He says, every woman I've ever been with is, is ruined for life. Because oh, yeah, because wh wh where are you going to go from there? Yeah, right. gonna, so I, I can right. kind of like relate to that because I, I know some girls that I've been with. It's like I know for a fact they're never going to experience the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're ruined for life. Because that's one of the worst feelings. Like it, it's, I think that's where a lot of inadequacy, inadequacy comes from with guys is let's say you, you date Beyonce. Yeah. 
and it's like you know she was married to Jay Z. What are you ever gonna do that Jay Z didn't do? <sighs> yeah, <clears throat> love, right. but then but yeah, maybe but, not get with Becky with the good hair. But it's like but, what people say, like love doesn't know, love doesn't <clears throat> pay the bills. Right, it doesn't. It doesn't. Because I think in most relationships, because I've spoken to a lot of married couples for that's been married for well over five years, mm -hmm. over 10, 15, whatever the case may be, just picking brains um, as for what keeps the relationship just milking them huh? together, right? Not, not so much milking. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, but although I have been milking the past, that's a different conversation, but <laughs> the, the, uh, well, then again, depends on what the context would I be. Just imagine I think like that a could husband be something comes else. In, he milked my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be wild. Um, but <clears throat> just talking to them about different sort of perspectives on what keeps the relationship going mm -hmm. love can only take you so far yep. then if you have the structure that exists over there you guys have plans whatever the case may be and you also have interest within you know different sort of experiences stuff like that then that's how you keep stuff going but like you said <clears throat> and we talked about this before where with an experience, if you're somebody who dates, you know, a multimillionaire or, or tens of millions, hundreds of millions, and this person is, you're in Dubai one week, and then you're yeah. in the Mykonos another week, and then you're yeah. over in the Maldives, and then you're heading over here or, or all the other stuff. Now you're like, all right, you guys break up. Now you're dating, you know, the dude who's working at the cubicle right. where, oh, well, you know, this weekend I kind of want to go over to, uh, you know, I kind of want to go to Antigua. Oh, Antigua. All right. Well, um, I can't afford to do that. So uh, wh well, what are you going like, to do? Like I said, one of the worst things for guys, even for me, I, I, when I just started, I had a car where the doors went up. Yeah, yeah, and on the um, BMW. The, one, of the yeah, best, right. one of the best things when the girl was like, oh, I don't know how to do this. It was yeah. like, I was like, oh, great. Right. Um, but like one of the biggest turnoffs for guys, it's like, yeah, my ex drove a Lamborghini. Oh. And as a guy, you're like, well, okay, like, what the fuck are you trying the to say? The fuck am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Because right, women right. think it's women think it's cool to be like, yeah, I've been to all these places. I I love Turks and Caicos. I love Antigua. Oh, are you going to Art Basel in Miami this year? Oh, are you going to Mykonos this yep. summer? Are you doing this? And like when a guy sees that, you're like. Like you've been outside. You've been outside. You've been outside, right? Because I know, right, I know right. you weren't paying for that. Like who was paying for that? Right, right. You know, because it seldom do you have. Because although oh, when girls are like, right. my ex was a billionaire. I'm like, okay, great. Right, the right. Because it it's not, it's not to say that women don't have the money to go and pay for those experiences. But no, no, no. More often than not, they're not going. You're not going to pay to fly first class to go to the Mykonos. Pay to enter the party. Right. Pay to go get you. Like, come on now. Let's let's just call it what it is. Like, it's not to say that you can't, but. We know what it is. Somebody's yeah. flying you out to go to those locations. You're not just willfully. Because there are some girls, and I've met some, who go on, like, multiple trips per month. Just go out. Just they, right. they, they work. They use that money. They go and they spend. They go out there. All power to you. But more often than not, somebody's paying and it, for that. And it that. depends on where they're going. Right. It depends right. on the. And if they're going to go to, like, Jamaica for a weekend, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or you're flying down to Miami or something like that. All right. Yeah. But if you're if you've got an international trip multiple times per quarter. Right. For numerous amount of days for a stay. Yeah, I flew to Dubai for 2 weeks. Yeah. Then I flew over here. Like, come on now. One of the come biggest green now. flags of my you're wife. You're getting I, shat on in the Middle I, East. I DM my wife and I was like, let's go to the Maldives. She left me on red. And I was like, great. Mm -hmm. This is a super green flag because now right. I know that's not that's not going to motivate her. Mm -hmm. So if it didn't work with me, any other dude that does that is not going to work with them either, mm -hmm. you know? Right, right. Um, and it's not like a matter of like, oh, she didn't like me. That's why it didn't work. It's like she did like me because when she, well, eventually we had lunch and stuff, she was like, oh, this is great. Right. But prior to that, just a random dude DM me, <clears throat> she was like, nah, I'm not about that life. So Right. Yeah, a lot of people want to get flown out. And, and even even with experience, just to go back to that, like if you can getting, give. Sorry, give me a second. I'm getting all of these calls. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the, biz, the business is booming right now. But um, I, I always, I, I looked at. Different sort of experiences. I remember the first time I ever flown first class with a girl, like the business class. She was losing her mind. Like, oh, my God, the chair can go and recline. And yeah. they, they call me by my last name. They give me unlimited wine. I have all of these different brands. I'm like, oh, man, this is. And I, I was just being chill about it because this is my first time in, in business class, too. So I'm like, <laughs> you, yeah, man, yo, you got to relax. Yeah. What's going on over here? So my, when, yeah. when I flew with, um, I went out to uh, Greece with my primary codal appointment. It was all right. 
It was all right. Your, your good girlfriend? Time. No, she still hasn't made it to a girlfriend, huh? Uh, well, I mean, it, it, it depends on how you look. I, I always have very distinctive names. Like, I don't call my parents mother and father. Like, my father is the uh, birth pa- givers? Yeah, uh, patriarchal seed providing Adonis, and my mother's a matriarchal birth giving Adonis. Okay. And then my brother, the unchiseled Adonis. <laughs> <laughs> and the so yeah. so if, 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 if I had a girlfriend or did not have a girl, I like to keep it on, Miss, despite the fact, you know, I'm in a relationship. But uh, <laughs> she's the uh, primary codal appointment, is what, what yeah. I what, what does she say to that, by the way? Oh, she, it's, it's, it's like it goes through one ear and then it comes out the other, but then she's like, yeah, why I'd don't you just call me by the, cause I like, if, if, when I go to her, her place, I call it the halfway house. So, you know, <laughs> it's just, oh. I, I always have different sort of, does you know, she, names she call you for one everything. Of those names? Like, yeah, this is my main guy. Mm, oh, well. I mean, if she did, if she Don't did as that. a way to slight, you exactly. know, at me, I could always, because I, I, it's not that I can dish it and not take it. So I always, you know, find a way to laugh about those well, things. Well, I think, I think with women too, it's like, they'll, they could joke with you, but the second you joke back, it, right, it becomes. Right, right, right. No, that happens all the time. But then I always leave, I leave like the window open to where it's like, all right, if I say something that comes, like it's a bit off-putting. I try to make sure that the context is in jest. So yeah. you know I'm not just going out of my way to try to disrespect yeah. you. Yeah. But I think there's moments in which the lines are blurred, which understandably so. But I try to reinforce that, hey, listen, this isn't me just trying to be a douche. I think it's also different because you're very, like, level-headed. Right. You don't get too high. You don't get too low. You're very yeah. keen even. Yeah. Uh, he saw it earlier before you got here. <laughs> me and my girl were like, it was getting, it was going up just because I'm a very, I get fired up. Dude, mm-hmm. I, I like I raise my voice, and it's never right. in an angry way. You can't be a victim, but it's like yeah. it's like passionate. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. like very pa- I'm a very passionate human being, and she's right. Brazilian, so she's a little, you know, she's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like so it's almost like one of those things where I go up, and she goes up higher, and I go up higher, and eventually we're just full blown like boom, 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 boom. But yeah. uh, she's learning to be like, right, I need a, I need a, give me ten seconds. Dude, mm-hmm. I was here just setting up. They setting got up. into they got into a little. I would yeah, not an argument, just a discussion. And yeah, like he said, just one getting higher. I was like laughing about it at first, and then I was like, uh. is, a, "Is a situation <laughs> happening over here?" Dude, I felt like when you're a kid, and then your friend's parents start fighting, and you have oh, to pretend yeah, yeah. you don't hear it. Well, this we'll is happening. It, I'm a witness. Something's uh, happening. But we joke also. It keeps it exciting. It keeps it because look, here we are married now. You know, but they got over it like that. Right. Yeah, it's one of those for things. me. It's always the because I get calmer and calm. Like I, it's damn near like turn into a serial killer. Yeah. And then my eye contact almost never breaks. Like if you ever saw when Tyson had to stare down with McNally, yeah. and McNally's like moving, and Tyson just standing there, just staring at him. His eyes are only moving, but keeping but his eye on him. I just immediately, I just get very calm. He's I speak very him. monotone at that point. The voice is incredibly deep. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I disagree. And I'll tell you why. And then we go back and forth and everything. And then we, I try to bury the hatchet as fast as I can. Because I always say, you don't go to sleep. You no, know, that's, it's usually healthy if it's, go, if it's going, if it's energetic. Because the second right. it's, it's bad, it's yeah. kind of like, uh, we're, we're, not, we're not talking at all. Yeah. That's when yeah. it gets bad. But if it's like, it's like a healthy discourse, if we're going like up, like we're passionate about it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, he kind of saw it too when we're saying like, you can't be a victim. Right. We had that whole conversation. I was very like into that. I have a meeting here in uh in six minutes. What, what time are we at? Yeah, we we are we're at we're, 48 minutes. Oh, 48. Yeah, yeah. Right, so yeah, wrap let's now. go for the, the next six minutes, and then we'll uh, mm-hmm. I'll do this meeting. But yeah, man. So this was a good episode. I feel like we we got real. This is I like these this episode that we just did because we talked about jobs, we talked about marine biologists, we talked about just everything in general. I don't know the topics we cover on the podcast. It's interesting because I. I like people that are tuning in. How many of you guys are regular viewers? How many of you guys tune into every episode? How many of you guys watch it? Because what? This is episode 26? Yeah, yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, 25, 26, 26? Something like that nature, yeah. So we've been, we've been doing this thing for a while, and uh, I feel like we've built a little core of people that enjoy watching us, but uh, what can we be doing better? Are we entertaining you guys? Do we get boring? I want to know like all of everything you guys tell me, or, or us as a whole, I read all the comments. Some of you guys hate me. Some of you guys love me. Some of you guys agree <laughs> with me. Some of you guys are like, man, why did Chisel agree with do the podcast with this guy? Some people are like, I agree with Renee. So what are you guys' thoughts? What can we do to make this podcast better, uh, more entertaining? I feel like this one was hilarious. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. it, it this was, was a good fun. one. But yeah. I want to get feedback because you guys, honestly, as much as we love doing this for us, we like doing it for you also. So you guys matter to us. Um, 
any feedback would be appreciated, but right. And even with um, like reactionary content, a different sort of, maybe I've been seeing a lot of different, you know, podcasts where they have like clips and stuff like that. And then you yeah. have a live reaction stuff like that, different things of that nature, maybe even guests, you know, bringing people on. If there are some people that you would want to see on the podcast and stuff like that. So definitely give us some feedback in the comments. And now that we've made it to that, you know, quarter hundred quarter yeah. century mark, you know, cause a lot of podcasts, they get few episodes in the they, they quit, quit. Yeah. you know, we've made it to 25. We're going to make it to 50 with definitely, Definitely going to make it over there to 100. So I expect here in 2024 for uh, the Assiduous Podcast to boom on the charts. But we definitely need your help in order to get there. Yep. So, yeah, anything you guys want. And by the way, this is the last episode we're doing here at this penthouse. So this is going to be the final episode at the penthouse. Uh, The Assiduous Podcast has has run its course here. I will be moving. I don't know where, but um, we're going to have to figure that out. But hopefully we can get another home base soon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Look forward to it. And definitely in the comment section, drop some guesses. Yeah, Hypo- some guess. A, a we can, hypothesis of where you think yeah. the Assiduous Podcast will be live from next. Well, maybe not so much live, but where will we premiere the next episode from? Will it be in Florida? Will it be in Wichita, Kansas? Maybe it'll be somewhere Omaha, in Puerto Nebraska. Rico. It could be in Omaha, Nebraska. It could be anywhere. Maybe the Gaza Strip. There's some conversation, but whoa, we may be whoa, live whoa. from any particular location. Let it be known in the comment section where you think the next episode will be premiering from. And uh, we can't wait to hear from you. But uh, once again, I am the diligent, vigilant, meticulous, sagacious, Ish, conscientious, conscientious, analytical, methodical individual, the chisel the Oh, he finished it. He finished it. He finished it. And he is a serial entrepreneur, Filipino prince, tycoon, tycoon Renee, Renee Lacad. And this is We, we Are Assiduous. assiduous. Woo! Episode 25, 26. Ba, ba, ba. Milking a pilot. Why did I say milk? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you.